In addition to valence bond theory, we can describe covalent bonding using molecular orbital theory. The idea here is that when two atoms approach each other to form a bond, their individual atomic orbitals combine to form molecular orbitals. These molecular orbitals are still determined by wave functions. So remember the idea of atomic orbitals came about from the Schrodinger's equation when we were discussing quantum numbers. So these molecular orbitals are still determined by those wave functions. Exactly like atomic orbitals, molecular orbitals can hold two electrons and these two electrons must be spin opposite or spin paired. When discussing molecular orbital theory, what elements are involved in the bonding are very important. Here we're going to start off our discussion of molecular orbital theory by discussing first row elements. And by first row we mean n is equal to 1, and this is going to be hydrogen and helium. The first example we will discuss is H2. Here we have two individual H atoms. Each H atom has an s orbital, and when these two s orbitals approach each other, the waves that make up the orbital can have constructive interference, which means they add on to each other. So the two waves combine to form a stronger wave. This stronger wave is called a bonding molecular orbital, and it is represented by sigma 1s. The sigma 1s molecular orbital is lower in energy than the 1s atomic orbital. The s orbitals from our hydrogens can also have a destructive interference or a subtraction from the wave. This forms what's called an antibonding molecular orbital, represented by sigma 1s star. The star represents antibonding. The sigma 1s star is higher in energy than the 1s orbital. So as the two hydrogens near each other, the s orbital from one hydrogen and the s orbital from the other hydrogen combine to make our bonding molecular orbital and our antibonding molecular orbital. The number of molecular orbitals formed is equal to the number of atomic orbitals combined. Once we've determined the molecular orbitals, then we start putting in valence electrons. The rule is, is that electrons enter the lowest energy molecular orbitals first, so our sigma 1s molecular orbital will be filled before the sigma 1s star. MOs are filled following Hund's rule and the Pauli exclusion principle, just like atomic orbitals. Once we placed our valence electrons into our molecular orbital diagram, we then can determine what the bond order is between the two atoms involved in the bond. This is done by counting the number of electrons in bonding molecular orbitals and then subtracting off the number of electrons in antibonding molecular orbitals and then dividing by two. This will give us the bond order. And remember, bond order is equal to the number of bonds in between the atoms. So a single bond has a bond order of one, double bond has a bond order of two, triple bond has a bond order of three. So for H2, each hydrogen has one valence electron. When they attempt to form a molecule, they form two molecular orbitals. We then place the two valence electrons inside of the molecular orbital. The sigma 1s bonding molecular orbital is filled first. Then when we determine the bond order, it is the number of electrons in bonding molecular orbitals, which is two, minus the number of electrons in antibonding molecular orbitals, which is zero. If we divide that by two, we get that between hydrogen, there is a bond order of one. And this actually matches the Lewis structure of H2. Each hydrogen is connected by a single bond. We then can consider some theoretical molecules. One is H2 plus. We can now consider whether this molecule can exist or if there's any bonding between the two hydrogens. Here, the number of valence electrons is going to be one. Each hydrogen normally brings one valence electron, but to gain a positive charge, we, we have removed one of those. So H2 plus only has one valence electron. We then put that valence electron into our molecular orbitals, and then when we find the bond order, there is only one electron in bonding molecular orbitals, zero electrons in antibonding molecular orbitals. When we divide by two, we find that this theoretical molecule, H2 plus, has one half of a bond. Finally, we look at He2, and we want to determine if it's possible to form a bond between two helium atoms. Here, each helium has two valence electrons, so this molecule would conceivably have four valence electrons. When the two heliums come near each other, their orbitals combine to form these molecular orbitals. 
And then when we place our valence electrons into these molecular orbitals, we see that we have filled the bonding and the antibonding molecular orbitals. So now when we calculate the bond order, there are two electrons in bonding molecular orbitals and two electrons in antibonding molecular orbitals. We divide by two, we get that there is a bond order of zero between the two heliums in this case. And when the bond order is equal to zero, the molecule is said to not exist. And so this is expected. Helium is a noble gas, and so it is not typically involved in bonding with other elements.